Vishnupadaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vanchakalpata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita nam pavane bio vaishnavibio namo namaha. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda. Shri Advaita Gadadha Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhaktavinda. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare. Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare. So, we're on chapter number 41 of the Krishna book. This chapter is entitled, Krishna Enters Mathura. So, we heard how Akrura had come to Vrindavan on the order of Kamsa to bring Krishna and Balaram to Mathura. So on their way coming to Mathura, they stopped to take a bath. And Akrura, when he went to take a bath, he had a vision of the spiritual world. He saw how Krishna had become Mahavishnu and Lord Balaram had become Anantashesha. And he saw they were surrounded by all uh, great devotees like Prahlad and Narada Muni and the four Kumaras and so many others of the spiritual world. Recording in progress. So when a when When Akrura was offering his prayers to Krishna, at that, at, in the, then Krishna disappeared, or not Krishna but Mahavishnu. Akrura was offering prayers to Mahavishnu and then the Lord disappeared from his vision. It all disappeared. <laughs> So after he disappeared, after Lord Krishna, Lord Vishnu disappeared, then Akrura got out of the water and he finished his rituals. And then he went to the chariot where Krishna and Balaram were waiting for him. And Lord Krishna could see the mind, he could understand the mind of Akrura and he saw that Akrura was struck with all kinds of wonder because he'd just seen the spiritual world. And so Lord Krishna asked him, did you see something wonderful when you were in the water? And Akrura says, oh my dear Lord, he said, all wonderful things in this world, either in the sky 
or in the water or on the land, they're all in they're all appearing in your form. So Akura said Akura said, I have seen when I have seen you, when I've seen you, then I, there's nothing more to be seen. I've seen everything wonderful because I'm seeing you. So the same thing is said in the in the Vedas. That if one knows Krishna, he knows everything. And one who has seen Krishna, he has seen everything. Archana? You're there? Okay. Sorry, Guraj. I don't know what happened. Yeah, I don't know what happened either. Okay. Anyway, just mute, mute everybody except me and you. Okay, Guraj. So, um, Akrura was saying that one who has seen Krishna has seen everything. There's nothing more wonderful than the form of Krishna. So then so then they, they got they're on the chariot and they get ready and they, they go to Mathura and they reached Mathura in the evening. And while they were going on the way to Mathura, all the people, they could see Krishna and Balaram on the chariot. On the, they were going along the road to Mathura and all the people, they would look at them and they would think oh, how wonderful Lord Krishna is. So Nanda Maharaj and and all of the cowherd men, they reached Mathura before Krishna and Balaram. Yeah, one, one reason is that uh, they say because Krishna and Balaram and Akrua, they stopped to take bath, so that took time. But all, another reason was because Nanda and the cowherd men, they all went through the forest, but Krishna and Balaram, they came along the main road. So when they got to Mathura, then Krishna and Balaram got down from the chariot and they shook hands with Akrura and they told Akrura, you go home now. Krishna and Balaram said, we're going to enter Mathura along with all the cowherd men from Vrindavan. 
ดือกิชัยกับบารังก็บอกว่าเดี๋ยวพ่อข้าเนี่ยข้ากับบารังเนี่ยจะไปเมืองมัทุราพร้อมกับชาวบรรดาบัน So we'll see you later. But Akrura said, "Oh no!" He said, "I, I want, I can't go to Mathura alone." He said, "I want to go with you. I'm your servant." He said, "I want to bring, I want to bring you to my home." If you will come to my home, I'll be very lucky. The, the dust from your feet will purify my house. He said, "Just like the water which comes from your lotus feet." Is the river Ganges, and the Ganges purifies everyone. We know Bali Maharaj washed your feet, and he became very famous, and he got all material opulence just because he washed your feet. And the Ganges water, which washes your feet, that's held on the head of Lord Shiva. And then there were the the ancestors of Maharaj Bagirat. They were the sons of Maharaj Sagar. They all got delivered by the touch of the Ganges water. And I know just by hearing about all of your pastimes, I can get purified. So in this way, Akrura prays to Lord Krishna. He said, "O Supreme Narayan," he said, "I offer my obeisances unto you." So then Krishna tells Akrura, "Yeah, I will come to your home, but not right away." I said, "I have to kill all the demons first." There are demons who are very envious of our Yadu dynasty, so I have to kill them. So Akrura was a little disappointed. He wanted, but he couldn't do anything. He had to accept Krishna's words. So Akrura entered into Mathura, and he went to Kamsa, and he told Kamsa that I brought Krishna and Balaram here, and they're here in Mathura now. And after he told Kamsa, then Akrura went to his home. So then Lord Krishna and Bala, Lord Balaram, they met with the cowherd boys, with Nanda Maharaj and the cowherd men. And they all entered Mathura together to see the city. 
คาราบารามแล้วก็นันดามาราชชาวบรรดาวันทั้งหลายเนี่ยก็เข้าเมืองมัทุราไปด้วยกัน Of course, Krishna was born in Mathura, but he never really saw Mathura because he was just a little baby. And immediately after his birth, Nanda uh, Vasudev brought him over to Nanda Maharaj's home. So Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram and all the cowherd men and the cowherd boys they're having a look at Mathura and they see it's very opulent. And in the, in those days, five thousand years ago, each of the cities there would be a gate where they enter into the city. So the gate into Mathura was made of very first-class marble. And the doors, the doors on the gate into the city were made of pure gold. And they could see everywhere there were beautiful gardens and orchards with many different fruit trees and flowers. And the whole city, around the whole city, there was a, a water canal. So that the enemies, any enemies who came to attack, they wouldn't find it very easy to come in. And then they saw that there were crossroads, and in the at every crossroad they were decorated with gold. And there were storehouses for storing grains, you know, like rice and wheat. So the storehouses were made of copper and brass. And they, they, could, they could see that there were many big houses, obviously the home of many rich men. And the houses were all built in, like they were all built together, maybe all designed the same way. So they were a nice arrangement. They could. They it appeared like it was all one, uh, one, one unit. You know, all the different houses. They were all part of one, like a subdivision. And each of the houses were decorated with many jewels. And each of the houses also had gardens with fruits and flowers growing. And then there were verandas on the houses, and they were all decorated with cloth. Haribo? Archana? 
Archana. Hare Krishna. Maybe his power cut off. Haribo. Yeah. Maybe we wait for him. Haribo. Haribo. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes, Ramash. Yeah, wait for me. Okay. Okay, we're back. So we got cut off. Um, Connection's not very... Recording in progress. Not stable. Well, we're describing the houses. And so the houses were very nicely decorated with a lot of jewels. And in front of the houses there were pigeons and peacocks also. Uh, and everywhere there were decorations of flower garlands. And there were water pots filled with water and they would put a, different things in, into the water. Along in the water pot they'd put yogurt and flowers and sandalwood pulp. So when Krishna and Balaram were passing along the street, all the brahmanas in the neighborhood came out to welcome them. And they, they, all, they brought sandalwood and flowers to offer to them. And all these people of Mathura, they were talking about how fortunate the people of Vrindavan are. Because they're so they're so fortunate that every day they were able to see Krishna and Balaram. So they were thinking they must have performed many pious activities to be so fortunate. They must have been very pious in their previous lives and in this life to be able to see Krishna and Balaram every day. So when Krishna and Balaram were walking in the streets like this, they met a washerman who was dyeing clothes. So this laundry man, this was actually one of Kamsa's servants. And Krishna and Balaram and the cowboy boys, they just come from Vrindavan, they just come from the village. So they didn't have such nice cloth. But they saw that this man, this laundry man, he got a lot of nice cloth. So they asked him, could we get some? 
พราะว่าก็ใช่บาลามแล้วก็ชาวินดาวันเนี่ยมาจากเหมือนกับเมืองที่เป็นบ้านนอกนิดนึงก็เลยไม่ได้มีเสื้อผ้าสวยงามอะไรมากนักใส่แต่เขาเห็นว่าชายที่รับรีดรับซักเสื้อผ้าเนี่ยเขามีเสื้อผ้าเยอะมากแล้วก็เลยถามว่าเออเธอแบ่งมาให้ฉันหน่อยได้ไหม So Krishna told the man, he said, if you can give us some of the cloth, I promise you that you get a lot of, uh, that you become very happy and you get all good fortune. So we should understand Krishna is not a beggar. And he's not in need of clothing. But he was showing, he was showing that everybody should be ready to offer whatever they have to Krishna if Krishna wants it. This is Krishna consciousness that you're willing to give up, even something you may be attached to. You'll give it up if Krishna wants it. But this this washerman was a servant of Kamsa. And he could not appreciate Krishna's request. He couldn't understand Krishna as the supreme personality of Godhead. And we have to understand this washerman had been a bad association. He'd been associating with Kamsa. So he couldn't give the clothing to Krishna when Krishna asked him. Even though Krishna is telling him that it will be, it will bring you a lot of good fortune. It will be very good for you to give to to us. It will be really for your benefit. But this. This laundry man had become a demon, and he could not take Krishna's offer. So instead of pleased, he became very angry, and he refused Krishna's request. And he began to chastise Krishna, and he said to Krishna, "How is it that you can ask for clothing which is meant for the king?" And the washerman then began to tell Krishna and Balaram, he said. You know, you boys should be more careful in the future. You will get in trouble if you do like this. Yeah, you have no right to ask for things which belong to the king. You're just from the village. You're just coward people. You're not the king. Uh, 
And if you take things which belong to the king, you, can, you will be punished by the government men. The government men will get you and punish you. They will arrest you and punish you. They'll give you a lot of trouble. So the the laundry man said, "I I know about this. I can. I've exp I've seen this before. Anybody who takes what belongs to the king, they get punished." So when Lord Krishna heard this, he was not happy, he was angry at this washerman. And so Lord Krishna used his hand and just with the upper part of his hand, he knocked off the man's head from his body. So the washerman's body fell, the washerman fell dead on the ground. And Lord Krishna shows us that he can do anything with any part of his body. He didn't need a sword, he just used his hand and he cut off his head from the body. If Krishna wants to do something, he, he doesn't need any help, he can do it all himself. So some of the men who were, there were some men there who were working with the laundry man. So when they saw the laundry man be killed, then they all ran away. And they just threw all the cloth, they threw all the cloth on the ground and they just ran away. So Krishna and Balaram, they took whatever close pieces of cloth they liked and they put it, they started to wear it. And the cowherd boys and the cowherd men, they also took some cloth, that whatever they wanted, they took some pieces of cloth. And they just left whatever they didn't want, they just left it there. So then Krishna and Balaram and the, and the cowherd boys, they, they go along the main road. And then when they're going along the road, they met a tailor who was a devotee. So the tailor saw this was an opportunity for him to do some service. So he took the cloth which Krishna and Balaram had taken from that laundry man and he took that cloth and he made nice clothes for them. So Krishna and Balaram dressed up, they put on the nice clothes and they look, it says they look just like elephants who are dressed with colored clothing. 
ล้วก็หลังจากตัดสภาเสร็จเนี่ยกระชากับบาลามก็ใส่แล้วปรากฏว่าดูบีมากดูเหมือนกับช้างใส่สภา Just like sometimes you know have an elephant procession, so when you have an elephant procession, we'll put some coloured cloth on the elephant. And so Krishna and Balaram were dressed up with the help of the tailor. He'd made nice dresses for them from the cloth. So Krishna, Krishna was very pleased with this tailor, and he blessed him with liberation. And there's different kinds of liberation, but he gave this tailor. He said, "You will be liberated. You will get a four-arm." Form with a body just like that of Lord Narayan in the Vaikuntha planets. This is called Sarupya Mukti. Right, liberation with the body, the bodily features like Lord Narayan. And and Krishna also blessed him. He said, as long as he would live, he would have sufficient opulence. He would be able to enjoy sense gratification. So from this incident, we can see that if somebody is a Krishna conscious devotee, he will not lack anything. He will not lack material enjoyment. He will get sufficient sense gratification. So they'll get whatever sense gratification they need, and when they give up the body, they'll go to Vaikuntha and they'll get a spiritual body. So then Krishna and Balaram continued after the tailor. Then they met a, a florist who was named Sudama. So Krishna and Balaram and all the cowherd boys he came into the house of the the florist Sudama, and he immediately came out, and he's very devoted, and he fell and like, offered full obeisances to everyone. So he, 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 this Sudama gave Krishna and Balaram nice seat, and then he asked his assistants to bring out flowers and betel nuts and sandalwood. Right. These are traditional items to welcome someone. When you receive someone, you should offer them flowers and put some sandalwood pulp on their head, and also beetle nuts can be given. 
อันนี้ก็เป็นพิธีการพิธีการแบบว่าต้อนรับแขกเวลามาบ้านก็คือการให้ดอกไม้เขาเอาแป้งที่กุดโดยดอกไม้จันเนี่ยไปทาเขาทาให้เขาแล้วก็เชิญเขาเข้าบ้าน Beetle nuts of course are not really for devotees แต่ว่าหมากเนี่ยไม่ได้สาวพวกจะไม่ได้ให้กัน But we can offer to Krishna So Krishna was very happy to be received like this by Sudama. So Sudama is very humble, and he began to offer prayers to Krishna. Right. When Krishna comes to our place, we should also be ready to offer nice prayers to him. Just like we offer prayers to sometimes we have Vyasa Puja and we offer make an offering to the spiritual teachers, to Prabhupada, and like that. เหมือนกับการที่เวลาวันของคล้ายๆวันวันเกิดของพระอาจารย์ทิพย์เล่าหรือว่าวันเกิดของเสด็จพระอุปาเนี่ยเราก็จะมีการเขียนถวายเขียนเหมือนกับเขียนถวายให้กับพวกท่านเนี่ยเหมือนกันเราก็ควรจะคิดบทมนต์ดีๆเพื่อถวายให้ Krishna so Sudama prays to Krishna he says he said that because you have come to my home I think all my forefathers and all my All my ancestors, they're all pleased. So that my God said, "Just from the time you came to my house, it made me feel that all the ancestors of mine, all of them, they have a great feeling of gratitude and gratitude." Just because you have come to my home, I think they've all become delivered by your mercy. จากการที่ท่านพระองค์เนี่ยทรงมาที่บ้านของข้าเนี่ยทำให้พวกเขาทั้งหมดเนี่ยได้รับความหลุดพ้น Then Sudama says to Krishna, he said, "You are the supreme cause of all causes of this world." แล้วสุดามาก็บอกกับคริชนาว่าท่านเนี่ยทรงเป็นแหล่งกำเนิดของแหล่งกำเนิดทุกสิ่งทุกอย่างในโลกนี้ But for the benefit of the people of this planet, you have appeared with your pleasure portion, just to protect your devotees. Yeah, you you come for two reasons. You come to protect your devotees. And you come to also kill the demons. You're equal to everyone. You're the friend of all living entities. You are the super soul. And you don't distinguish between friend and enemy. But you give your devotees, you you're happy to give your devotees special results. Because you are always pleased by the service of your devotees, so you like to reward them. So Sudama says to Krishna, "I am just praying that you will tell me what I can do for you." And Sudama said, "I am your eternal servant." 
แสดงมาก็กล่าวว่าข้าพเจ้าเนี่ยเป็นผู้รับใช้ในระดับของพระองค์ If you order me to do something then it would as a blessing for me ถ้าเกิดเราพระองค์ทรงสั่งให้ข้าพเจ้าทำอะไรเนี่ยอันนั้นเนี่ยเปรียบเสมือนกับเป็นพรสำหรับข้าพเจ้า So Sudama was so happy to see Krishna and Balaram come to his place. So he made two garlands, very beautiful garlands with the very most fragrant flowers, and he presented them to Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram. พวงมาลัยสองพวงมาลัยที่สวยงามมากแล้วก็ทำโดยดอกไม้ชนิดพิเศษที่มีความหอมมากแล้วก็ถวายให้กับคริชนาแล้วก็มาลัย Because he understood Krishna and Balaram have come here, I'm a florist. They 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 must want some flowers, so let me give them my best flowers. เพราะว่าสุดามาเข้าใจว่าคริชนากับบาลามเนี่ยมาหาเขาแล้วเขาเนี่ยเป็นคนขายดอกไม้เพราะฉะนั้นเขาก็แปลว่าพวกท่านเนี่ยต้องการดอกไม้พวงมาลัยแน่ And so when the when Sudama gave them these nice garlands, then Krishna and Balaram were very pleased. แต่ตอนที่สุดามาเนี่ยได้ให้ดอกมาไอ้ได้ถวายพวงมาลัยให้เนี่ยพิชัยกับบาลามก็ทรงมีความสุขมากๆ So Krishna gave blessings, which he always gives to those who are surrendered souls. แล้วเมื่อพระองค์ทรงพึงพอก็ได้เนี่ยพระองค์ก็จะทรงให้พรเหมือนกับที่พระองค์จะให้พรกับโดมิเนียนอื่นๆที่สิเรารับต่อพระองค์ So Krishna asked the florist, what blessing do you want? อย่างพิชัยก็ถามคนขายดอกไม้ว่าเธออยากจะได้พรอะไร So Sudama said, I just beg from you that I will always remain your eternal servant and do devotional service. แล้วสุดามาก็กล่าวว่าขอให้ข้าพเจ้าเนี่ยได้เป็นสาวกของพระองค์แล้วก็อยู่ภายใต้การรับใช้ของพระองค์ตลอดไป I know by doing devotional service I will be able to do good for all living entities เพราะข้าพเจ้าทราบดีว่าจากการปฏิบัติตามที่ต้องเสียสละรับใช้เนี่ยจะทําให้ข้าพเจ้าเนี่ยถามาสามารถทําสิ่งที่ดีต่อสิ่งมีชีวิตต่อดวงวิญญาณผู้อื่นได้ So this is a very nice request by Sudama. So it shows a nice example that a devotee, one who is Krishna conscious, he doesn't want to ask anything simply for his own benefit. He doesn't just think about his own advancement in devotional service. He has to be willing to work for the welfare, for the benefit of others. The more we give Krishna consciousness to others. The more we'll become Krishna conscious ourselves. Prabhupada said when he went to America, he said, "I did not come to beg from you; I came to give you." So Prabhupada, when he went to America, he said, "I did not come to beg from you; I came to give you." I have come to give you what you have forgotten. So the same example is there in the Goswamis of Vrindavan. There's a song about the Goswamis of Vrindavan written by Shrinivas Acharya. มีบทเพลงเกี่ยวกับโกสวามิที่วินดาวันเขียนโดยสรีนิวาสอาชัยนานาชัสตราวิชารีนายคันเนปานาสัตดรมะสัมสตาปะเกาโลกานามเหตุคารีนาทริบุวันเน
manyo sharanya karo radha krishna padara vinda bhajana nandhena mataliko bande rupa sanatano ragujago shri jiva gopala go the Goswamis, they were always in that mood of the gopis. They studied all the revealed scriptures. To they wanted to establish eternal religious principles. And these principles are for the benefit of all people all over the world. Right? So the Goswamis, they don't just think about themselves, they think about others, how to benefit others. A devotee of Krishna will not be selfish. So whatever benefit they get from serving Krishna, they want to give it to they will distribute it to others. So this is the highest welfare work. Mm -hmm. Krishna consciousness. You, you, if we think to give, to distribute Krishna consciousness to others, it's the highest welfare work. It's not just simply oh, feed the poor or give a house for the poor or give shelter for the poor, but we want to give them Krishna consciousness. So Lord Krishna was very satisfied with the Sudama, the florist, and he gave him whatever benediction he wanted. And Lord Krishna told him in addition, I offer you all material opulence and family prosperity and a long life and whatever else your heart may want. Whatever you may want in the material world that's yours, you just have to desire it and you, your desire will be fulfilled. So in this way, Lord Krishna is described as entering Mathura. Okay, so that's the end of this chapter. We'll hear about more people when he goes further into Mathura. We'll be still going to meet Kubja. We'll meet Kubja. We'll hear about what happens with Kubja. So that's in the next chapter. 
Okay, are there any questions? Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj, from Sarapunna Mamataji. Oh. Yes, Sarapunna Mamataji. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, Tandabad Pranamka. Hare Krishna, Tandabad Pranams. Ajna, Lili Mikhan Thamwa. Laundry man, he Krishna Sanghana. มันเป็นคนเดียวกันที่คนเดียวกันกับตอนสมัยรามลีลาที่เขาบอกว่าเอ่อเค้าเข้าหามาตรสีตาอ่าทําไมสีตาใช่มั้ยคะพอดีเค
ก็คิดว่าเนื่องจากตัวเองอยู่ในตำแหน่งของกษัตริย์ก็ต้องรักษาความศรัทธาของพวกประชาชนให้ให้มั่นใจแล้วก็ก็เลยปฏิบัติตามตรงนั้นโดยที่ยอมสละภรรยาของตัวเอง So he sent his wife off to go to stay in the ashram of Valmiki. So of course this was to, this help. This only increases the separation, the feeling of separation between Lord Rama and his consort Sita. And she went to the ashram of Valmiki. Then she gave birth to her children. And then after some, then she entered into the earth. She came from. She was born from the earth. She entered back into the earth. And when she entered back into the earth, she entered back to her eternal lila in the spiritual world, where she is with her husband in the spiritual world. So the, it was uh, the separation led to their union. Mother Sita and Lord Rama are always together in the spiritual world. But for some little time, the separation is there to increase the pleasure of being together. When you're always together, then. You take each other for granted. You don't appreciate each other very much. But when they, when you come back together again after a long time, then you're so happy to be together again. Just like when Vishnu, Bhakti, and Sundarangi come back from India, then you're very happy to be with them after being away from them for a long time. You're very happy to be with them again. So the separation helps us to appreciate the union coming together. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. All right. Another question. Yes, go ahead. Chaya. Okay. Okay. Uh, maybe Yogi Tamaji can go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Matushi. Hare Krishna, good day, my humble obeisances. Good day, uh, the dealer that Lord Krishna blessed. Uh, is it that Lord Krishna normally knows, right? But that uh, the devotees, they don't want anything else. And then only the Lord blesses them, right? Is it? Uh, the devotees don't want anything else. Other than the service of the Lord. 
And then only the Lord blesses them with everything. Yes. Mm. A devotee cannot have any material desire. Mm. So even though Lord Krishna didn't uh, know the tailor for so long of his first son, they probably met. But because he's Paramatma in everybody's heart, he would have known that the tailor has no other particular desires because the Lord wished him even to accomplish sense gratification. So that's why I thought, but the Lord blesses everyone only after he knows that they don't want anything. So, yes. Fine. Pure devotional service means Anya Bilasita Sunyam Jnana Karma Jana Vritam. Anukho Yena Krishna No Shilanam Bhakti Rutama. Right? So there should be no material desires. No desire for sense gratification. No desire for liberation. One simply wants devotional service, service to Krishna. Hmm. Gurudev, the other thing is, uh, what what is it that uh, when the Lord blessed them, saying that your sense gratification needs will be met, then what are the sense gratificatory needs of a devotee? I mean, because. They have no more sense gratification. So what are the needs exactly here that well, the Lord is blessing? You have to have prasada, <laughs> right? Uh. You, have to have, you have to maintain the right. material body. You have to have some prasada. Right. You have to, probably, maybe you have family. Yeah, mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, these different okay. things. That and, way. Not, not mundane sense gratification, not sense gratification independent of Krishna consciousness. It's all in relation mm -hmm. to Krishna consciousness. Ah, okay, okay, okay. You got it, got it. Now I got it. Thank you, Bhutti. Clear now. Thank you. So everybody has to have some sense gratification. If there's no sense gratification, there's no taste. So we get our sense gratification, nice kirtan, a nice darshan of the deities, nice prasadam, nice kata, these things, nice association, sadhu sangha. Mm. Yeah? That means one can have sense gratification but in relation to Krishna. Yes, right. Everything mm. in relation to Krishna. Got it, got it. Thanks, Gurdi. Thanks. Archana? Yes, ma'am. Come home for Mother Dina. Have him. Wah. Ah, Changkat Pania. Who he got from the Lord. He got from the Lord. Upon the bad news, Krishna will give us the blessing of the Lord. Who is the the Lord? Who is the Lord? Who is the Lord? Who is the Lord? สำหรับสาวกของพระเจ้าเนี่ยคําว่าแปลว่าสาวกเนี่ยก็คือการเมื่อที่เขาเนี่ยไม่ต้องการความสุขเอ่อทางโลกวัตถุใดๆในการสน
บางอารมณ์ที่เขาทำอะไรเงี้ยซึ่งต่อเนื่องกับดีลาของพิชนาเหมือนกับว่าเขายังอยู่ในสามธรรมชาติวัตถุซึ่งพี่คล้ายๆว่าเขาได้ยินเรื่องแบบนั้นอย่างเช่นบางอารมณ์ที่มันเหมือนคล้ายๆกับมนุษย์อะไรอย่างเงี้ยค่ะในส่วนของดีนิกรเลยอยากให้ครูมหาราชอธิบายให้ฟังตรงนี้หน่อยอะค่ะเข้าใจพี่ไหมอืมโอเคเข้าใจแล้วค่ะเข้าใจว่าโอเคเข้าใจแล้วค่ะอืมอืมเข้าใจเหมือนกับว่าถ้าเดนิกรก็ยังอีกสื่ออะไรช้าหรืออะไรอย่างเงี้ยคล้ายๆแบบเนี้ยซึ่งพี่ฟังมาหลายอย่างที่ก็เลยสงสัยเลยอยากให้ครูมหาราชอธิบายให้ฟังได้ครับได้อืมครูมาร์ชเธอคำถามคืออ่าเธอเคยได้ยินมาหลายครั้งเกี่ยวกับเทพเจ้าและเธอเห็นว่าเขาอยู่ในอำนาจของสิ่งแวดล้อมที่มีอิทธิพลต่อสิ่งแวดล้อมที่มีอิทธิพลต่อสิ่งแวดล้อมที่มีอิทธิพลต่อสิ่งแวดล้อมที่มีอิทธิพลต่อสิ่งแวดล้อมที่มีอิทธิพลต่อสิ่งแวดล้อมที่มีอิทธิพลต่อสิ่งแวดล้อมที่มีอิทธิพลต่อสิ่งแวดล้อมที่มีอิทธิพล Under the control of material nature, or they realized it sometime, or something like that. Well, you have to understand the demigods are not pure devotees. They have some desire to uh, have position, to have authority in the material world. มีความต้องยังมีความต้องการในการที่จะอยากเป็นใหญ่หรือว่าอยากจะเป็นผู้ควบคุมดูแลในบางส่วนของโลกวัตถุนี้อยู่ Of course there's there's different levels of demigods there's some demigods who just live on the higher planets on the heavenly planets but they may not have any real power or authority ก็มีเทวดาบางคนที่อยู่ชั้นแค่อยู่ในบนสวรรค์เพราะว่าผลบุญที่เขาทำมาอะไรนี้แต่เขาไม่ได้มีพลังอำนาจอะไรมากมาย We say there's 330 million demigods เราบอกว่ามี33ล้านองค์เราเทวดามี33ล้านองค์ So they're pious To, to go to the heavenly planets, to get into the heavenly planets, they have to be pious. But they're not pure devotees. They have some attachment to the material world. They would want to enjoy. And they go to the heavenly planets, and they enjoy long life, and they enjoy also very good looking, and they enjoy also opulence. ที่มันได้รับความสุขมากกว่าในโลกวัตถุในโลกนี้โลกมนุษย์ and some some of the demigods many of them they they have they have some position like Indra he's the king of heaven and then he's the god of rain and then you have also Vayu the god of wind and you have Lakshmi the god of wealth แล้วก็มีก็มีเราเทวดาบางคนที่เป็นอย่างเช่นพระอินเนี่ยก็จะดูแลเรื่องคนโตแล้วก็มีพระวายุเทพที่จะดูแลเรื่องลมพัดพายุต่างๆมีพระแม่ดูแลเรื่องนี้อะไรก็จะมีแต่ละองค์ so you want to get a good husband you worship Lord Shiva you want to get a good wife You worship Uma, the wife of Lord Shiva. They want to get good health. They worship the sun god. So whatever things in material world you may want, you can worship these demigods, but. The the demigods they only give material blessings. 
ไรแล้วบางคนเนี่ยอยากจะได้ผลประโยชน์อะไรทางวัตถุอะไรเงี้ยเขาก็จะไปบูชาเทพตามตามความต้องการของแต่ละคนแต่ว่าพวกท่านเนี่ยให้ได้แค่ผลเอ่อพรทางโลกวัตถุนี้เท่านั้น And they can only give their blessings with the permission of Lord Krishna. Because Lord Krishna is the super soul in the heart of all the demigods. He's in the heart of every living entity, so he's also in the hearts of the demigods. So generally, in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes less than foolish people. They will worship the demigods because quickly you can get result. The demigods are easy to please. But they will not think about what is good for you, and they will not think about purifying you. So before Lord Krishna gives his blessing, Krishna will first of all think, "Is this actually good for this person?" Krishna thinks how to bring this person. Back to Godhead, how to make him a pure devotee? So it takes longer to get the blessings of Krishna. But demigods, you can please them quickly. But you get trouble also. Because the demigods they will may give you the blessing, but that blessing will lead you want another blessing after that. You will not be satisfied. You have one blessing, then you want another blessing, then you want another blessing. But Lord Krishna, when he gives the blessing, he will give the blessing so that one blessing will be enough. You don't want, you don't need another blessing. Lord Krishna doesn't want you coming every week to get another blessing. So he will give the one blessing which will fully satisfy you. But when we worship the demigods, and it's a different situation. Just like you can worship the one god to get good health. But then you have another problem. Maybe you have, you don't have a job, no money. And and then when you get money, you have a job, then you think. I should have a husband. I should get married. 
but then that's another problem. And then when you get a husband, then you think, I want a child. And you may get a child, may get a girl, and think, oh no, I want a boy. <laughs> And like the, there's, the desires should just can go on one after another and after another. So you worship one God, and then another God, and then another God, and then, oh, this God, I forgot that God, there's so many gods. And you're going to worship all 330 million gods? Oh. So what we have to do, we have to worship the Supreme Lord. And that will take care of everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we don't need to worship all of the gods, we need to worship the one Supreme God. We give, the, we give the example about putting water on the leaf. If you water all the leaves of the tree, it's no good. You have to put the water on the root. Just like if you worship Tosi and you put the water on the leaf of the Tosi, then the leaves will fall off. But if, if you pour the water on the root, then the water will go to all of the leaves and branches. So Krishna is like the root, and all the demigods, they're like the leaves and the branches of the tree. Does that help you, Shaya? Yes, Guru Maharaj. But I have uh, another question. Can I? Yeah, go ahead. เอ่ออาจารย์ครับพี่มีความสงสัยพอดีว่าเอ่อมีคนมาสอบถามพี่อ่ะนะคะสําหรับคนที่บูชานิมิตรเนี่ยค่ะเหมือนกับว่าเค
Well, you worship the demigods, karma will be there. If they're, if, they're, if they're not going to do it, they're not going to worship the demigods, what are they going to do? Are they going to take up worship of Krishna or are they just going to stop all worship? อ่าเหมือนเขาเคยบอกว่าเหมือนกับว่าองค์ที่เขาซื้อใหญ่ไปแล้วเขาเหมือนบอกพี่ว่าเนี่ยแบบมันไม่ไม่ได้เจอมา
you, you see, we're not against the worship of the demigods because the worship of the demigods is on the Vedic culture, it's part of the Vedic culture. And by worship, some, we, we see sometimes people, when they, as, by worshipping the demigods, then they'll come to gradually, one day they will worship the Supreme Lord. It's better to worship the demigods than to be like a Christian or something, because the Christians, you know, they're not in the Vedic culture. So the worship of the demigods is mentioned in the Vedas because it will satisfy people's material desires. But the idea is that one day they will want to come to the to the supreme to the highest platform to worship the supreme God. So, you, you can worship the demigods and you can also worship the demigods thinking they're part of the body of the Supreme Lord. Yeah, like the sun god is the eye the eye of the body of the Lord. All the different demigods are all parts of the body of the Supreme Lord. So we can worship the demigods understanding them, not that they're not the Supreme, but they're a part of the Supreme Lord. But it's much better to come to the worship of the Supreme Lord. So we offer our respect to the demigods. So I said, you know, you may sell deities, you can sell forms of the demigods, yeah. You can do that, you can sell these things. And we offer respects, we go to temples of the demigods, we offer respects. Mm -hmm. But we don't eat their prasadam. And we don't chant kirtan with their names. Kirtan is only done with the names of the Supreme Lord. Should be Hari Kirtan, the Kirtan of the Supreme Lord, the names of the Supreme Lord. And you have to understand, worship of the demigods, you go to the planet of the demigods. You don't go to the Supreme Abode. You go to their planet in the material world and stay there, then they come back. Mm. 
Is it clear, Jaya? Yes, Guru Maharaj, because I, I think um, it's easy about who is um, interesting about um, Puja Hinduism demigod. Then it means um, they have some, I mean, basic to understand about this. Then I think this topic, uh, I mean, this issue is can be um, uh, bring them to be um, the worthy in the future, Guru yes. Maharaj. Yes. Then I think about um, then I need your your uh, advice. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna. Okay, so thank you very much, Archana, for all your translation. Oh, is that another question there? Jo oh, yes, Guru Maharaj. Jolene has but a question. But is that too late? I don't know. Just a quick one. Jolene two has more Jolene has a question, yeah? Yes, yes. Uh, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Um, my humble obeisances to you. Um, I have a, a question in my mind. It has been lingering for quite some time. Um, when we are encouraged to chant Hare Krishna for protection, uh, we, we to become a pure devotee. Um, but whenever something bad happens to the body of devotee, why is it that uh, it becomes a sudden switch? You know, you change your gear towards. Uh, chanting the names of Lord Narashimha and uh, chanting Narashimha Strotam. Uh, why is it not that um, you should, why is it not that we chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra more intensely? Mm. Hare Krishna. Well, you can. It's up to the devotee. You know, every devotee has their own particular mood. It's not that you have to chant to Lord Narashimhadev. But some people, certainly some devotees will do that when they're in a dangerous situation. But you can also just simply chant Hare Krishna more intensely. It's not a rule that you have to worship Lord Narsingade. You can also, you know, part of surrendering to Krishna is to know that only Krishna can protect us. Right? It's one of the items of surrender, to know that only Krishna can protect us. So we don't need to worry about other... You don't need to pray to Lord Narsingadev. Some people may do it, they have that faith. But we can simply chant Hare Krishna more intensely, and it's very good. Certainly Prabhupada just wanted to chant Hare Krishna. When Prabhupada was very sick, when he was preparing to leave the world, he just wanted Hare Krishna mantra. He didn't tell us to chant to Lord Narsingade. But he did say we could pray also to Lord Narsingade. Because Lord Narsingade is known to be very, uh, very suitable to give protection to devotees when they're in danger. They have some dangerous situation. So Lord Narsingadev is always there. He's always coming to protect devotees like he protected Prahlad. And so we can always pray to Lord Narsingadev. But we don't have to, just simply by praying to Krishna. Lord Krishna includes, the form of Lord Krishna includes all of the incarnations. Lord Narsingadev is a Vishnu avatar, so the Vishnu avatars, they're all included within the form of Lord Krishna. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you for explaining. Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you for your question. Hare Krishna. Okay, Archana, so we'll stop here tonight. Okay, good day. Thank you very much. Thank you for your translation. Thank all the devotees for listening and questioning. We'll see you all next week. Have a good week. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Yeah. Bye. Go back to Vrinda Ki. Thank you.